Hello everyone, this is Hank. I'm back today for another episode of Adobe Camera Raw. And today we are going to talk about the lens blur panel. Okay, what is a lens blur panel? Um, this panel is recently added by ACR, which will allow you to blur the background to simulate the effect of the lenses that have very wide open apertures, such as like f1.8, 1.4, 1.2. Okay, um, so today I'm going to show you, if you look to the right here, the panel is a lens blur, and when you first open it, everything is grayed out. The, the reason they gray out is because they expect you to turn it on before you can use it. Turn it on by clicking the apply. Okay. When you do that, you see that blue circle moving around. And that basically, uh, the ACR is loading the lens blur function into the, the thing. So now, once it did that, everything come up like this, right? So first is the blur amount. The default is middle, which is 50. And if you press the toggle visibility, you will see the difference between the before and the after. Okay, so it does blur it out. Now, if you want it to be blurred more, you move it to the right. Okay. And blur less, you go to the left. Now, all the way to the left is zero. That means there's no blurring applied at all. And it will further blur as you move all the way to the right. Today, I'm going to go all the way to the right to show you the obvious effect. Right, and then the next one would be a different kind of bokeh that you can choose for. Default is the what they call modern circular lens, and you can switch over to the bubble, so the background would be changing. Go to the pentagon, um, background changing again, and uh, you can go to the donuts effect, or you can go to the cat's eye effect. Okay, uh, most of these you will see uh, it very clearly if you have a background with circular lights, you know, brighter light sources in the background, and then you can see the effect more closely. In this example, you can't really tell the difference that much. Okay, so normally I just stick with the default. Okay, the bokeh boost, okay, would be... Uh, for again, for the brighter light sources in the background, you can darken it by going to the left or brighten it, go to the right. Now, if you look at the upper right corner here, there's some bright source there which you can see the effect. You go to the left, it become darker. You go to the right, become brighter. Okay. D4 is 50. All right. Now, if you look at this image at first glance, it does a great job, right? Everything is blurred. But you got to be careful because it always makes mistakes. And you got to kind of watch out. For example, if you zoom in here, you see that, that that background there should be blurred and it's not for this example. So that's a mistake that you need to fix. Uh, there's a couple of other mistakes that I will show you a little bit later when it comes to that. All right? Which we're going to come very soon here. Okay, you will see this one map. They usually call that a depth map. And uh, it shows you the near versus the far. Right? The near, this one here kind of resembles your subject here. And you see this battery thing, and that is kind of gives you the range where the focus will be. Okay, so, so for example, if I move this focus here, then I, I'm telling it, forget about the figurine. So the figurine now is blurring okay, because of this range. 
Okay. Or I can say, okay, I want everything in the back to be in focus. Okay, normally you want the focus range to be small if you want to simulate the effect of of the lens. Okay, so something like this would be reasonable. All right, that's up to you. Now, that is because by default it used what it calls the artificial subject detection. And it does a fairly good job, except that it does make errors as I showed you before. Okay, or you can use this targeted tool. For example, you, you want to focus on the eye, then you click it. Now if you want to focus in the back, and you can click it in the back. So it switch for you, right, where you want it. <coughs> okay, go back to this one. I want it to be like this. Now immediately, if you look up here, right, um, when you reduce it, this thing got blurred, but up here, there's an error, so it doesn't identify as this one palm branch. So it, it doesn't blur this one, so if you change this thing, you have to fix it. Right, now I'll show you how to fix it next. Now there's a visualize box that you can click, and this one will help you visualize uh, what area is in focus and what is not. When you click on this, this thing change color, and the one, the white, the yellow, the orange are the one that's in focus, sort of. Okay, the, the, as shown over here, the white one is the one most in focus, and then the yellow is a little bit less, and then uh, the orange right here would be still in focus but a, a little bit less and then you move on to the purple the bright purple first and then darker purple and then the dark gray okay so that's basically show you the near and far effect of things whether or not they in focus or not so remember the the white the yellow the orange are the one in focus and uh, different shades of purple Right, and in this example, you look at this visualization, and you see immediately that okay, the it's not purple, it's orange, so it's more in focus, which we don't want. Now you look here in the back uh, of the figurine; those are supposed to be blurred, but they're not. Okay, now down here, this area should be blurred as well. Down here, though, this area should be in focus. So there's a couple of things you need to fix. Okay, now you can keep the visual eye depth on to fix, or you can fix it without, okay? It depends depending on uh, what you're comfortable with. Okay, so for example, how do you fix it? You use a refinement tool down here. Okay, so you got to know whether or not you want to blur or you want it to be in more focus. Okay, in this example up here, right, what I really want to do is to blur this guy. Okay, blur it compared to what? To the one down here. Okay, you see the... Okay, and you want this thing as well. So, obviously, you're going to click on the blur. Okay, the blur amount is what control how much you want to blur, right? The brush size, you can do it here, okay? Or you can use the try and true square bracket, okay, to affect it, right? And the blur amount, now the blur amount, as long as you have the brush active, uh, you can change the blur amount after the fact, so you, you're not really afraid of messing it up. The feathering is kind of feathered a little bit, so it, the effect is not too abrupt, right? So you need a certain amount of feathering. You can double click it to default, which is zero. Normally you turn it on a little bit. The flow here is how much you want to paint at one time, right? The auto mask help you protect against the edge. 
So you can turn it on and off depending on what you want to do. So you can just brush it and blow it like this. Right? If if you're not careful, you can mess it up really bad. Right? So that's really bad. Now you can use a visual lies effect to help you. Okay, now the effect is too strong. Okay, so you want to back it off by the blur amount. Like that. Now if you make a mistake, you can hold down the on and it option key in Mac and subtract. Okay, otherwise um looks good. Okay, so a combination of using visualized depth and not and, and you can make it reasonable. Right? And you can go in here and you blow it some more here. So it looks a little bit more natural. Okay, something like that. So that looked reasonable. Later, you know, you can always use Photoshop or some other to, to, to tweak the image because there's a limit on what you can do with this one. All right. Sometimes the auto mask uh, kind of create the artifacts that you don't want. So you can unclick the auto mask and do it and, and it looks a little bit better depending on what it is. Okay, so you're done with that part of it. Now, zoom out by doing a control zero and then zoom back in for this area, right? And you press Z to zoom in, press Z again to get back to the they think. Okay, so now this one you also want to blur, but you don't want to use the same brush as up there. You want to keep it separate. In order to keep it separate, you got to start a new one by pressing this. Okay, so now you have a new blur brush independent of the one that you just did. Okay, so you can go in here and blur this one. Okay, auto mask is going to help you in some case so that it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't help you, sometimes it does. Okay, so you go in here and you blur this one out. As you can see, some stubborn area. Okay, and that kind of hurts you with the auto mask, you got to unclick the auto mask, make the the brush smaller to get rid of these blurring ab abnormally. Right there, right? You go in here and you tweak it so that it looks good. So now it looks good. You fix that area. And hold down the space key and you can move. This area is a troublesome area. Okay, so you want this one to be blurred. Now you have a choice of using the same brush or a different brush. I recommend a different brush for different area. Okay. You go in here and you can blur it out. Like that. It should look good. Now the problem is here you want it to be in focus, okay? Um, so let's um, let's zoom out a little bit, maybe to fifty percent, so that we can see more. Okay, so there's some blur area here that is not supposed to be blur. So we can switch over to the focus one. Okay, um, 
you want to change the focus amount. You don't want to be in complete focus, so you can let just brush it back in. Just gonna bring the focus back there. So that looks good for that one. If if you wanted to be a little bit more in focus, you you change this focus amount a little bit more to make it a little bit more in focus. Okay. Now there's a a piece of this is completely blurred out, so it looked kind of unnatural here. I would recommend you do another brush, okay, because it's a different level. So you press that, now you have a different brush, and you can change the focus amount really high, because this one is like really in focus. Right. So you can like gently click it. Okay, now we want to zoom in. Um, You want to zoom in to, uh, let's say, 100%. Okay, so um, you want a little bit too much is in focus. You want to hold down the ornament key and uh, brush that one out right there. Okay, so now you got everything in focus. And that is how you use the refinement tool to fix everything. Okay, so now everything is in pretty good um, shape. And this probably be a keeper. Uh, later, you may want to zoom in and try to fix it elsewhere. But right now, look like I have covered everything uh, that I can cover in the blur. Um, the lens blur area. Okay, so with that, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, before I go, uh, I would really appreciate a like from you, and if you haven't subscribed, uh, a subscription would be great. Subscription would help alert you to the new videos that I'm coming out in this series, especially I try to release at least once a week. All right, with that, thank you so much for being with me.